Hi there, my name is Wisdom De Costa. I'm chairman of the West Windsor Residents Association and a councillor in Clue and North in Windsor. This presentation was first made at a public meeting at the Windsor Racecourse on the 20th of January 2015, when we were looking at the effects of a third runway or a new northwest runway or an extended runway on life locally to Windsor and the surrounding areas. So what are the health effects of Heathrow? I'll start with a summary. 50 or more of the top health institutions worldwide have looked at the effects of the health of aircraft noise, aircraft pollution and the traffic pollution that results from increased aircraft operations and increased flights, increased passenger numbers. You get the idea. Their research has noted more than 60 medical conditions caused by airport operations. This includes increased mortality. What that means is that the death rate in this area will increase and those of us who live here will have a shorter life expectancy. Increased morbidity. So more of us will suffer more types of sicknesses. Not just us, but our children and our children's children. This will result in a reduced quality of life and reduced well-being. If you want to know more, sign up for our email campaign news information at www.wwra.org.uk. It's usually in the top right hand corner. So who says we have a problem? Well these guys do. Some of the world's top educational and health institutions. The World Health Organization, the European Commission, the NHS, the Health Protection Agency, Public Health England, University of Southampton, Comiap, Harvard School of Public Health, Kyoto University, University of British Columbia. I could go on, but you get the idea. You can download these slides at www.wra.org.uk. Here's a full list of some of the people who say we have a problem. So what are the health problems that they've looked at? Well, here's a long list, as you can see, 60 or more. But let's have a look at some of the headlines. An effect on your physiological functions an effect on productivity, diabetes, increased heart conditions, um, that's high blood pressure, heart attacks, cardiovascular diseases, changes in lung function. Problems which will affect all of us, but in particular will affect vulnerable groups in society. And I point out that some of these issues, when they affect children or relate to pregnancy, cause permanent damage. Our children will never recover from those issues. So here are a few stats on the effects of aircraft noise. This is from a study which was conducted around Heathrow Airport and includes Windsor, uh, RBWM residents and residents of people in Slough, Hillingdon, uh, Hounslow, Richmond, Runnymede, Spelthorne. So what did they say? Well they said that individuals exposed to persistent aircraft noise over 50 decibels have greater risks of hospital admission and death. The risks are 24% higher for stroke, 21% higher for coronary heart disease, and 14% higher for cardiovascular disease. In particular, mortality for myocardial infarction, heart attacks, is highest if you've lived in the area for 15 years or more. So you may not have it yet, but you probably will. Well, let's put this into perspective. When you look at the aircraft noise actually suffered in the area, just from takeoff, and bear in mind that takeoff for Windsor and Dacia is quieter than landing, with the aircraft are lower to the ground for a longer period of time. Just from takeoff, already the noise levels 57 decibels. Whereas what they're saying is that the risks increase substantially over 50 decibels. Peak decibels, well, some of you will have seen, you know, 60, 70 decibels or even higher when they've looked and used their own wide noise meters. So this is a big issue and one that's underplayed by the government. So Stansfield and Matheson in their study Noise Pollution and Non-Auditory Effects on Health point out a number of issues. We're going to have sleeping problems. Uh, more and more people will be issued with sedatives and sleeping pills. And this is something that's noted by local GPs. Exposure to higher levels of noise leads to progressive loss of hearing. And this is permanent. This will affect our memory, increase aggression for children there are irreversible negative consequences. Let me say that again. For our kids, they will suffer permanently. They will never recover. 
This will also result in headaches, restless nights, being tense and edgy, mental illness and physical illness. The mental health issues have already been pointed out by some of the local GPs. It's a complicated area, and as Stansfield and Matheson themselves say, undoubtedly there is a need for further research to clarify this complex area, including better measurement of noise, exposure and health outcomes. That begs the question, doesn't it? Why haven't the Airport Commission or our government bothered to look at this to protect the people in this area? So how much noise and how low will the planes be? If you look at the slides, in black it says what the situation is today. How high the aircraft are over the ground on landing. In the red columns you've got the effect of a third runway, the northwest runway, um, which will sit over towards the west, closer towards Colnebrook, and will cover Eton and Langley. And then in blue we've got the Heathrow Hub extension. Now this to me is a numpty of all the proposals and this extends the current northern runway 3,000 metres to the west and actually goes into one of the reservoirs potentially. So what are the effects? Well it's quite clear that the third runway, northwest runway, which is the least worst but pretty awful of the options, will result in flights being 300 feet closer to the ground. That means that the noise intensity that you suffer, and I'm talking about actually what you will suffer, could double. And that's just from the peak levels of noise. So if today you're experiencing 60 or 70 decibels, it will be double that. When we look at the Heathrow hub extension, although this doesn't affect Langley and Eton, and by the way, if you live in Langley and Eton, you want to know how noisy will your place be with the third runway? Well, just pop over to Colnebrook and Datchet. They, will experience to, they are experiencing today the same levels of noise as you will experience in the future. Although, be warned, um, in the future you will be experiencing this morning, noon and night, 365 days a year. So, back to the Heathrow hub extension, the numpty proposals I call it from Jock Lowe. Here, flights will be 450 feet and up to 500 feet closer to the ground. That's well over 100% of an increase. So, it's pretty scary. Very, very scary. Look at the bottom of the slide, you'll find out where I get the information from. And this is also using the three degree flight path that um, um, planes will be following. When they glide into the ground, they come in at an angle of three degrees. And so you can utterly predict where exactly they will be over the ground uh, along that flight path when they're landing. But remember, with the Northwest runway, there will be more than a hundred percent increase in flights and if of course you live in Eton and Langley that's infinite because you don't suffer any flights today but in the future you may be seriously blighted. So it's up to 700 flights a day, 365 days a year from early in the morning 4.30 a.m. till 11.30 a.m. and 11.30 p.m. at night. There'll be limited relief. What I mean by that is that during the day there'll be few periods when there'll be no noise. Wow. I tried. From early in the morning, you won't sleep, some of you won't sleep, um, till late at night, every day, 365 days a year. That sounds like hell to me, or should I say hell? Eh? So what about the Heathrow Airport? Well, the Heathrow Hub, sorry, the extended northern runway. This is even worse. Not only will you have a doubling, you'll have up to 233% more flights. And the reason I say 233% is that today, for Windsor and Datchet, what we suffer is morning, noon, to noon and night flights for only 30% of the year. Whereas in future, because of the way operations work, this will be 600 flights a day, 365 days of the year, from 4.30 a.m. in the morning to 11.30 p.m. at night, plus night flights. You cannot say that many of you won't be disturbed by that. But if you're not disturbed, well done. I'm glad for you. But for many of us, we will be disturbed. So, what effect does noise disturbance have on individuals? Well, we can point to a lack of sleep from noise disturbance. When I say noise disturbance, I mean not only the loudness of the aircraft noise, but the time of day it comes in, 4.30 in the a.m. in the morning, a loud aircraft will wake you up, and also the frequency of the aircraft noise. 20 years ago, we were talking about a few thousand flights, 30,000, 40,000, maybe 100,000 flights, now we're talking about three quarters of a million flights. So the argument 
that don't ex- you can't not expect aircraft noise in a, at an airport if you live near an airport is rubbish because the number of flights the noise of the flights have increased or the disturbance of the flights has increased two or three hundred percent nobody who lives near a road expects a motorway to be built outside their front door so anyway back to this slide the lack of sleep well it impairs judgments and causes accidents sorry guys it kills your sex drive and reduces fertility causes mental health issues and depression, makes you forgetful. It causes age, ageing and weight gain, reduces immunity. This can lead to serious health problems. And now I stress, this is not me making it up. This is the medical professionals who have said this. The serious health problems can include heart disease, heart attack, heart failure, regular heartbeat, high blood pressure, stroke and diabetes. Those are all killers. Not only are they killers, but they cause a serious impairment in the quality of, of your life if you suffer from them. Not just you, but your family. So the increased l- risk of death, what is that about? Well, it reduces your f- lifespan, well, potentially by up to four years. And that's four years of your good years lost. I don't think anything is worth reducing the lifespan of individuals in this area. So a few stats on pollution. Now, the world health organization have said that of the diseases caused by pollution 40 percent are ischemic heart disease 40 percent stroke 11 percent chronic obstructive pulmonary disease six percent cancer and three percent acute lower respiratory infections especially in children Um, i have to say that the three percent does surprise me because so many people as a counselor come to me and say you know what since i've moved to this area um, i now suffer from asthma or uh, other forms of respiratory diseases. So that is that is surprising, but perhaps this was done worldwide, uh, not looking at the level of intensity of pollution that we suffer here in the southeast. So what about Comiap, a government agency? They say that 30,000 deaths due to road traffic pollution and the particulate matter happened in 2000 and 2008. And that was a long time ago. That was five, six, seven years ago. And levels of pollution have increased since then. So just based on stats that came out five years ago, so this is a conservative estimate, we estimate that around 900 people per year actually die due to pollution in the 2M area around Heathrow. That's Spellthorn, Slough, uh, Windsor and Maidenhead, Runnymede, Hillingdon, Hounslow, Richmond. Now that's just on a straight like-for-like basis. It doesn't adjust for that increasing level of pollution that we'd we'd have in in the southeast compared to areas like, say, Scotland. And it also doesn't adjust for the fact that uh, pollution has increased since 2008. So just looking at these 900 figures, 900 people per year extra dying in this area, that's a six-month reduced life expectancy and a cost according to the Aviation Environment Federation, of £16 billion per year. Public Health England themselves say that one in 12 people would, of the, sorry, one in 12 of the deaths in the area are due to pollution. Now that's just pollution from traffic, from the traffic associated with, um, with airport operations. So we're talking about uh, cars coming in, coming out, dropping off passengers, and we're talking about 60 to 120 million passengers. So big passenger numbers. And we're talking about Freight traffic, fuel traffic, bringing in freight, uh, so we're bringing in freight and bringing in fuel for airliners and the associated airport operations, catering, and so forth. Now, Heathrow rightly are proud of the fact that they that seventy percent of the planes coming out of um, Heathrow contain freight in the belly of the plane. Well done, I applaud them for that. It, it, it's a great operation for them. Now they're looking to double that as we double the. 54% increase in flight numbers actually with the wider body jets means a 100% increase in capacity which is why Terminal 5 was built to take the airport capacity from 60 million to 120 million and the same will happen to cargo so that means not only we have more road traffic from 120 million passengers that's 60 million more doubling of passengers but also from a doubling of the freight transport Okay, so that's just road pollution, um, particulates from vehicles. What about pollutants from aviation fuel? Benzene, carbon monoxide, formaldehyde, nitrogen dioxide, particulate matter, toluene, xylene and more. These have been shown to have effects on on the health of individuals. They can cause cancer. Some of those are carcinogens. 
Now that doesn't even deal with the fact that some planes, for example, listen, uh, will dump fuel in the atmosphere. Recently, the Virgin, one of the Virgin Atlantic planes, had a problem and had to return to Heathrow just after takeoff. Well, hold on, if it was just after takeoff, it was fully laden with fuel. When it came into land, it was pretty much empty. Where did it dump all that fuel? Well, primarily over the poor Welsh in the, in the Bristol Channel, but also over us. So, what studies have been done to show the effect of um, emissions from aircraft and dumping of fuel above our heads? So, what are the effects on you and your family of these health issues? Mortality. This will increase the death rate and reduce your life expectancy. Morbidity. More people will suffer a greater range of illnesses and our health and well-being will consequentially reduce. Life won't be so pleasant. What about the financial effects? Well, we'll have to buy more medicine and when you do suffer, more of us will have reduced income. Why is that? Well, here are our contracts, minimum wage contracts, more aggressive um, employers. Well, we can't really blame the employers in some ways. It's, it's tough financial times. But the net effect is the risk gets placed on you and me as ordinary residents. For many of us, our income levels will fall. What about the macroeconomic effects? Well, think about it. More people are sick. Well, well more people will have to go to hospital. So we'll have to pay for more um, health care. Either that or we have to reduce the level of services in, to other people. So some people will, won't get the public health services. More people will be on benefits. So the level to the, of, of um, uh, payments out of the government or the, the draw on the tax take will be substantially increased. How do we deal with that? Well, well, we don't pay people benefits, leave them in poverty. Well, we don't treat them, let them die and suffer. Or we have to reduce other public services. Maybe the defence, maybe the police. Maybe we cut down the number of schools we need, or maybe we make us all, other people pay for their own education. Either way, the country's broke, we can't afford these extra costs. And I say extra costs, and you might say to me, well, won't it be the same over Gatwick? Well, no, only 20,000 people live around Gatwick compared to up to 2 million in this area. That's 100 times more. The differences are phenomenal. So the effect on the exchequer on the tax will be phenomenal as well. Oh, and by the way, I haven't even talked about the fact that if we have reduced earnings, then clearly there's going to be less tax going into the money into the government at a time when they're expecting to pay out more in benefits and in healthcare. So the net effect is a result is a reduction in productivity and reduced GDP for the UK, which is going to make borrowing money for the government much more difficult if our triple A rating goes to a double A or a single A. Right, the Airports Commission have asked in particular, what have they missed? And I'm just looking at this from a human point of view, i.e. what effect will that have on residents? I'm not looking at this from an environmental point of view, the ecosystem or wildlife. So just relating to us human beings, this is what I see that they've already missed in relation to health. Now, there's certain aspects of the effect of noise on health, which they've missed. So well-being, the spiritual, spirituality, uh, really the whole person. They've not looked at this holistically. They've not looked at the health effects of pollution from aircraft. They've ignored the health effects of pollution from a doubling of road traffic. Remember I said we're going from 60 million to 120 million passengers. We're doubling the amount of freight. We're going to have uh, 70 to 250,000 new people and their families in this area just working at the airport. So that's a lot of extra cars on the road. And what about the health effects of the construction phase? This is an enormous construction phase. Not only will you need 100,000 new houses in this area, you'll have to double the hotel capacity because you're doubling the number of passengers. You're going to have to build in new areas around Heathrow. You're going to have to put the, reconstruct the M25, put it in a tunnel, maybe even put the A4 in a tunnel. That's a lot of construction. That's a lot of lorries trundling around. That's a lot of dust in the atmosphere not just around Heathrow, but also where they build the houses and hotels. We haven't even asked. Where are you going to build the houses and hotels for the workers? Well, there's only, there aren't many places, but I would have thought that the Green Belt in Windsor and Maidenhead and in Spelthorne are prime areas for, for building. What about the health effects of increased radiation levels? Whichever way you look at it, this may not be a big issue, but the point is 
there's going to be more microwave dishes, there's going to be more, more transmissions, there's going to be more um, emissions from the airport, from the increased numbers of aircraft as they have their own forms of radar coming overhead. What effect is that going to have on us? No one's looked at that. And what about the health effects of congestion and overcrowding? Where are these people going to live? Slough is full. They say they don't want more people, but they want more jobs. Well, where are they going to put the people? Don't know. Hillingdon is full. Hounslow is full. Richmond? Should we build on Richmond Park? Um, what about Spelthorne and, and RBWM? Well, already at the Royal Baron Windsor Maidenhead, we are under huge pressure, I say as a councillor, having seen the local plan, under huge pressure to even meet our current commitments for housing. We can't do it. And now they want another 100,000 new houses? The only way you can do that is by building on green belts. So we're going to have basically Windsor and Maidenhead, Spelthorne, becoming one urban extension of London. Where you see green now, replace that with grey tarmac and buildings. And you get an idea of what the place might be like. So here are a few more questions to ask. Who will be affected? If they put an extra runway a Heathrow, up to two million people will be affected. I know I've quoted one million and two people. Well, one million relates fundamentally to the flight paths, people who will be dramatically affected by noise and pollution. But two million in the wider areas of Hillingdon, Hounslow, Richmond, um, Spelthorne, Runnymede, Slough and Windsor and Maidenhead will be affected because they're going to take more people, more transport, more cars, um, and also more pollution from the cars. When you look at Gatwick, today's Gatwick's population is only 5,000. Gatwick Airport say that that could go up to 18,000. But even if you're very, very kind and say, I don't know, um, 20,000 or, or 200,000, that's still a substantial difference of magnitude between Heathrow and Gatwick. You're affected, affecting between 10 and 100 times more people at Heathrow with all of those health conditions with that increased death rate, with a reduced life expectancy, with increased levels of sickness. And of course, two million people will cost more to pay for health services and benefits than 20,000 people would. Now, no disrespect to Gatwick, I mean, they have to fight their own cause, of course they do. But the people I seriously care about are the people who are around Heathrow and in Windsor and Maidenhead, because they're the ones who've elected me, and I, this is where I live. So why haven't the government or the airports commission researched the situation properly? Why are they ignoring World Health Organization guidelines and health professionals from around the world? This country is broke, so why spend another £14 billion pounds more than needed? At the end of the day, the consumer will pay in higher prices or uh, money coming out of the government, or i.e. our tax revenues. So, do you want this? Can we afford it? at a time when this country is already effectively bankrupt with more than one trillion pounds of debt. Uh, this is the public debt, i.e. The, the, um, the government's debt, and our income not meeting our expenditure. So, would you lend money to somebody who's um, constantly overspending and can't afford to make the repayments? No. Why would the government, want, or even the Airports Commission, want to put two million people at risk what can I do to protect my family and future generations? So this is what you can do. The copies of the slides and presentations will be on the WWRA website now. Sign up for campaign information. We'll tell you what to say, who to say it to and when to say it by. Today the Airports Commission deadline is 3rd of February, but you know this is a political situation. The, the government, David Cameron, may be trying to um, foist or rather um, sidestep the issue by saying no 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 it's the airport commission's fault but it's not it's up to the government to make a decision either David Cameron's government or if you vote them out then the new government next May so we can campaign we can get to our MPs and our councillors and say no 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 but what about other decision makers and influencers well we're keeping that up our sleeves we're working with lots of other different organizations to prepare campaigns for you. So look, join us to help us help you and your children and our children's children. So here are a few closing thoughts. I'm going to um, paraphrase Elizabeth, Elizabeth Noel Newman, who's a political uh, scientist. She talks about spiral of silence. 
So this has been our concern for the last few years. Uh, and Heathrow would do this, and, and you understand why, you know, it's their job, isn't it? So anyway, mass media coverage of Heathrow's opinion becomes the status quo, and the minority becomes less likely to speak out. I say minority, but what I do mean is the minority voice, um, not the less fewer numbers of people, but people who don't have a voice in the media. So the minority becomes less likely to speak out, so Heathrow's desire becomes fact. Here's a fantastic quote from Father Professor Henri Nguyen. Without silence, it is virtually impossible to grow spiritually. Without silence, it is virtually impossible to grow spiritually. And without solitude, it is virtually impossible to live a spiritual life. Well, you may not consider yourself spiritual, and so many of you will do. But I'll tell you one thing. With either of these two proposals around Heathrow, you will get neither silence nor solitude.